Great apes are under siege. Chimpanzees and gorillas killed for meat. Orphaned infants smuggled to the Middle East, destined for short, miserable lives in deplorable conditions. It is illegal hunting and cross-border trade in endangered species. But authorities do little to stop it. Following a trail of evidence, investigators build a case against smugglers, buyers, and the government officials who protect them. The Cairo Connection. I watch your documentary on the Cairo Connection. It makes me wonder if we still have gorillas and chimpanzees and apes in the wild in Africa. We still have, but those populations are getting hammered for the bushmeat and now the, uh, the orphan trade, I mean pets. Uh, the Cairo connection was one, uh, there was, the demand source from the Middle East is high. There's a lot of private collections where very wealthy Arabs mm -hmm. have their own little zoos. It's kind of a status symbol to have a at tiger home. and a lion at home. Yeah. And so chimps and gorillas fit into those collections. So the demand from those collections was mostly channeled through Egypt. So we tried to document that, exposing again some key dealers. Again, nothing ever happened to them. Again, none of the apes was confiscated or repatriated, which is uh, one of the site stipulation. More recently, there were 130 chimps exported from Guinea Conakry to China. They were all exported with fake permits stating captive born. Not a single one was captive born. They all came from the wild. Hundreds, thousands of chimps needed to be killed to produce those 130. Again, nobody pushes China to confiscate. Nobody's being prosecuted. Nothing happens. What do you think is the best way to combat wildlife trade? Educating the people will make a big difference and educating the people means getting the media interested and I'm glad I have this opportunity but as I then to go out with images where maybe two viewers turn off and the other of eight or out of ten say I didn't realize that I'm going to change or I'm going to do something differently in future or I'm going to tell my friends about it so maybe you have lost two viewers who can't handle the graphic imagery but you have gained eight conservationists who didn't know before and now know and might be willing to change in some way. How can each individual help? So I think the individual himself, herself, is limited she or he can do uh, okay uh, the consumption is one aspect but I mean I think if individuals feel strongly about the message to take the message further not to say okay I won't buy uh, a reptile skin bag tomorrow or instead I'll do something else with my money but to convince her five friends to also not buy a reptile skin bag and her five friends to convince another five friends and as I said, to just generally make their voices heard, you know, write to their parliamentarians, write to CITES. Uh, if these people get emails, if these people get phone calls, they realize the public cares. If the public, they're, they're civil servants, they're paid by us. They're supposed to act in our interest. If they decide that we feel strongly about these issues, they will act in our interest, as long as we don't react they feel it's fine to go on as it is. They won't do anything about it. So the individual has a voice, but it's you know work to make that voice heard. You have received many awards for your works. Do you feel it means more responsibility for you? You know the awards is I don't know. It's nice to get recognized, but at the end, you know, you're not going to get the awards for what really matters, meaning, you know, the, the hard, difficult issues to be addressed, the public, the policy makers just don't want to deal with. If you push their nose into it, you don't generally get awards for that. Uh, you know, you be, be, become classified as an extremist, and that's the way of dealing with you in that context. So, if there was extremist award, I would be happy to win one you don't get an award for being considered an extremist. When you try to film your documentaries, 
Have you ever received um, death threats? Not death threats as such. I mean, the fact is, uh, you know, I have learned to get in and out pretty quickly before people catch on uh, why I'm there, what I'm trying to do, what the consequences might be of such a film and exposure. So, yes, some of these traders uh, are concerned about losing some of their markets. And yes, uh, they don't like what I or some you know, my colleagues have been doing with me. And yes, you have to be aware of that. And yes, you have to try to avoid, as I said, in my case, it's getting in and out, not hang around and give them a chance to figure out what you're doing, why you're there and so on. Found all my spare film gone. Uh, empty containers, open the camera film has been removed as well. So clearly while I had a meeting with the manager last night uh, they went into my room and uh, searched it, stole all the film, emptied the camera. What do you see yourself today Carl? As a filmmaker, as a photographer, conservationist, activist? Troublemaker. <laughs> Why troublemaker? Because is that Basically nobody wants the mess. The media doesn't like those harsh realities to be confronted with. The policies makers don't like it. The public in general doesn't want to has enough bad news on their plate economically, politically, everything else. They don't want another level of problems. Mm -hmm. So every time you push these these messages onto somebody they really think you are just trouble, you, you really, they don't really want to hear that at this stage. Is there still any hope left that we can save wildlife, given the situation today? I personally see little hope. I mean, there will be areas, of course, with, you know, in Africa we have reached stages where private individuals buy estates, fence them in hire their own range mm -hmm. of forces, do what the government is not able to do in national parks and say I want my own private little reserve and I do whatever it takes uh, to protect well, my wildlife and of course animals will survive in that setting and um, they will be relatively happy. Uh, but what does it mean for the future? The only wildlife left is in this fenced in areas uh, which are basically glorified zoos again คุณข่าวอามานมุ่งมั่นที่จะต่อสู้กับการค้าสัตว์ป่าต่อไปนะคะพวกเราเองก็สามารถช่วยได้ค่ะไม่ซื้อไม่ขายสัตว์ป่าไม่ใช้ผลิตภัณฑ์ที่ทําจากสัตว์ป่าและถ้าเกิดว่าเป็นไปได้ก็คือให้ข้อมูลความรู้กับคนอื่นๆนะคะหลายๆคนรวมกันก็จะเป็นพลังอันยิ่งใหญ่ช่วยการอนุรักษ์สัตว์ป่าค่ะก่อนที่จะไม่เหลืออะไรให้อนุรักษ์เลยนะคะพบกันใหม่สัปดาห์หน้าค่ะวันนี้สวัสดีค่ะ